India today is under a tremendous amount of water stress, just like the rest of the world, thanks to climate change, global heating, and uncontrolled water use. And of course, there's also water pollution. A proposed solution for this in the country by the government is the interlinking of major rivers in the country. The hope is that by doing so, excess water from one region will be transferred to more drier regions that require water. This is not a new idea at all. It's been floated since at least the 1880s during colonial times. China is currently doing this at an extremely large scale in what is the country's largest and most expensive infrastructure project. US has done it at a smaller scale and multiple other countries have either attempted to do it or are planning to do it. Many places have completed their projects, although they have faced some problems like in the case of China, the leaking of industrial pollution from one river to another. But the transfer of pollutants aside, there are consequences to such projects from the point of view of climate and weather patterns. This is what has been shown in a new paper from Indian scientists who examined what would happen to the Indian summer monsoon, which peaks in September, if the river interlinking project is completed. Unfortunately, it's not really great news and there might be even more consequences that we are not aware of. India is an agricultural country and the largest chunk of water in the country is used for agriculture followed by urban needs. This is going to be extremely tough for survivability, of course, because of climate change and global heating that is causing water stress everywhere and changing in the patterns of climate. On top of all of this, India is now the most populous country in the world and water demand is growing from all quarters. We also don't have good infrastructure to store excess water when we get inundated during the monsoon so that it can be used later. A simple solution is rainwater harvesting, but this doesn't happen everywhere and doesn't happen at large scales. So most of the water goes into the oceans during the monsoons in the form of surface runoff. With all of this in mind, the river interlinking project has been planned. This is also ambitious and it aims to distribute water supply across the country. Various rivers will be interlinked with each other through a network of reservoirs and canals and drier regions are expected to get more water. The idea for this interlinking project picked up steam again a century later in the 1970s and 80s with active involvement from the Ministry of Water Resources and the National Water Development Agency in the form of reports and feasibility studies. From 2005 to 2013, the central government conducted several impact and feasibility studies and rejected the proposals. Now it is being taken up again seriously. The interlinking project consists of mainly two parts geographically, a network of northern Himalayan rivers and a network in the southern peninsula. There's also the proposed interstate linking across multiple regions. While this project does and can offer a whole host of benefits, including access to water and better transportation using water, not much is known about the environmental consequences and the impact of doing something like this to the environment and ecology around these areas. Ecologists are of course concerned about this because such a project when executed will affect hundreds of thousands of species, both animals and plants, whose habitats would be modified. But another thing that is unclear is the hydrological consequences or what happens with the water cycle over the Indian subcontinent. To understand this, let's look at the proposal first. The Himalayan component is expected to have 14 links transferring Himalayan water all the way up to Rajasthan and the peninsular component in the south will have 16 links which will link rivers south of Narmada and Tapi but also linking rivers that originate all the way in Bhutan via the northeastern states and going all the way down to Godavari in Andhra. The scientists in this paper, the new paper, say that no other projects have studied the impact of the hydrological cycle through what is called the land-atmosphere feedback. 
The land atmosphere feedback is the process by which land and atmosphere are linked and transfer energy and material to one another. For example, when there is excess heat, there is a lot of evapotranspiration, evaporation of water, which could make certain areas more humid. The same goes for region where there's irrigation. It works the other way around too, when there's a release of lighter colored aerosols, say such as sulfur particles from ships or volcanoes, it temporarily blocks out the sunlight reflecting it back into space and thus cooling the land. This kind of feedback loop system is an important and key component of the water cycle on Earth and crucially, it also shapes the monsoons. Land atmosphere feedback is already known to play a major role in the Indian summer monsoons spread across the country. As a result, the rains can change which river basins get more water. In fact, nearly 25% of the Indian summer monsoon is made up of water that evaporated from the land in the country over months. This is called recycled precipitation. Now, river basins that exist today are also linked by land atmosphere feedback. Not just within a river basin where water evaporates and then it rains, but also there is atmosphere to atmosphere connections across different river basins, meaning that winds carry humidity across and there is river basin to land connections where the heat and energy of the land feeds into what happens in river basins like, well, precipitation. For example, what happens in the giant Ganga River affects all the regions around it. And down south, what happens in river basins around Kaveri affects what happens in the Kaveri River. This occurs naturally and has been occurring since these rivers came into existence, although thanks to human land use and global heating, the patterns are once again changing. Now, when all of these rivers across the country are interlinked, the entire pattern of land atmosphere feedback will change. This is because water is being physically transferred from one basin to another for irrigation. Then this new basin that now has new water will develop properties that will then cascade on to other river basins that it's connected with because all of these are already connected through this land atmosphere feedback loop. When these scientists studied what would happen to the monsoon in the country because of such changed feedback loops, they found that while rains do increase a bit near, say, the Ganga River system, there will be a reduction in rains in nearly 12% of the rest of the country, which are already mostly dry. Not just that, the increase in rainfall in some river basins could also lead to extreme events like flooding in those basins. The decreased rainfall will especially be more prevalent in agricultural areas. Central India all the way up to Andhra Pradesh, East India, coastal Gujarat, Rajasthan and Uttarakhand will see a drastic reduction in monsoon which is quite significant during September which is the peak for these regions. Rainfall can go down up to 30% here. Meanwhile, there will be about a 12% increase in September rainfall in East India, including the states of Bihar, Jharkhand and East Uttar Pradesh. In Maharashtra and Telangana too, rainfall is expected to go up by 10% and this of course would lead to floods. The rivers being interlinked not just changes the monsoon spatially over the country, but will also change the temperature, soil moisture and other parameters that feed into the hydrological cycle. When the rainfall reduces, temperatures go up by up to 1 degree Celsius, which is a lot for climate. So, while the interlinking aims to take excess water from one region and transfer it to another, what will happen is that the feedback from extra irrigation in places that were dry before will lead to declining rainfall in neighboring regions which now have water. And this will be scaled up across the country naturally because of changes in the hydrological cycle. There will be a number of such unintended consequences of rivers interlinking at such a massive scale because we can't just tinker with nature in an effort to solve problems created by humans. 
we definitely do need to adapt and if such an interlinking must be done at a country level spanning large areas of land and extreme volumes of water, how the land and water will affect the rest of the country and the climate needs to be taken into consideration through the land atmosphere feedback which until now has not been included in any proposals or feasibility studies so far.